We've had a number of questions recently about what you need to take with you if you're going bike packing. Now, unfortunately, I don't know. But with me is a man who is more than qualified to answer that question. This is Sean Conway, a man who's ridden around the world among many other adventures. And Sean, you have kindly brought your current bike packing bike with you. Can you talk us through it then? What do you need to take with you if you're going bike packing? Hey, so si, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is my current bike packing adventure bike. Uh, I would potentially consider taking this to Australia, to be honest, and, wow. and around the world. Might change, change the wheels, but certainly that frame, I, I love it. I've done many, many miles in it. There doesn't look like there's much here, and bear in mind, I'm quite soft. You know, I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna be comfortable with this. So, so what, is in, what is in this setup? Well, the first thing you should know about bikepacking is now with current sort of pannier setups, you really don't need to go off and buy a specific touring bike. You can kind of use your, your road bike, which is exactly what I've got here. I've got my old Trek Madone and I, I just strap panniers to it and, and I'm off, I'm ready to go. Yeah. It really is that simple. You don't need all this fancy sort of touring kit anymore like you did in the past. Okay, cool. Well, that's a bonus then. So no new bike for a start, just got to buy some bags. Yeah, you got to buy some bags. And it, then it depends kind of how long you're going to go bikepacking for. If you're just going bikepacking for a weekend, you really don't need as much as you think. Yeah. The basics are, firstly, you probably need something to sleep in. Obviously, you want to go camping. That's the whole point of bikepacking is to go yeah. and sleep under the stars, I think. So you can either take a super lightweight tent. This is actually the world's lightest tent. Bit of a gram nerd, there we go. That is really quite light, actually, that isn't it? That is actually as light as a pint. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Lloydie, Lloydie will be at home with this. Uh, room, for, room for two? Or uh, just... Yeah, it depends, small person. Maybe not two of you, but... You okay, know. right, fair enough. <laughs> a bit um, of spooning, it'd be fine. Exactly, so you've, you've got the tent. You can also go for a bivy bag if you prefer. Um, then obviously you've got some, some other things in here. What do we have here? We have a, a charging, something to charge your phone. You're gonna be out for a couple of days. You might not have access to charging uh, all, your, all your kit. So a bit of a battery pack, that'll help. Um, in the evenings, you know, head torch, very important for a head torch. Yeah. You, you often, you know, you want to end your ride on the day, probably in a pub, and then you wait till it's dark, and then you go and find a place to camp. You always need a head torch so you don't sleep uh, on top of a sheet. Bikepacking sounded good, actually, you know. We're talking about pubs and pints. You know, maybe I could do this. That's the whole point, you know. You want to enjoy it, you know. It's not about the racing. You want to have fun, and hopefully, you know, trying to get as little, as minimalist kit as possible, you know. Yeah. Some people take the whole kitchen sink and have five panniers. You really don't. When I cycled around the world, I had a similar setup to this. My whole, my whole bike, and that was a steel frame bike um, with a hub gear was 16 kgs. So you really don't need much. This is down to about 12 or 13 kgs. Uh, so you really don't need as much. Uh, saying that, a couple of things that are important, a bit of deodorant. Yeah, you're always important. <laughs> well, you you want to make friends in the pub and, and, and when you're sitting in the cafe, you've got to have cafe stops. Bit of deodorant, obviously you've got to have the small can. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's actually finished. <laughs> i got to make no friends anyway, throw that away. Well, with a man of my <laughs> reputation, this is a definite. Right, okay, so deodorant. <laughs> and because we're on the gram, gram nerd stuff, uh, half a toothbrush. Half a toothbrush. Oh, saved at least 50 grams there, didn't I? And a mini toothpaste, anyway. <laughs> that's the hygiene bit. Yeah, um, cool. In the evenings, it may get a little bit colder, obviously, so you want just a, a lightweight gilet, uh, and I've got a waterproof, of course, if it starts to So rain. this is our only kind of casual kit? This is the only casual kit I take, definitely. There's, some people take spare set of tights, spare socks. I do have a spare set of socks here. Yeah. For the second day, you can dry out, dry out the others. But actually, two sets of tights, I always say your tights reach salt saturation in about three hours. After there, they kind of stay the same, right? Right. <laughs> so your second pair is just going to dirty your bag. So one pair of shorts to potentially ride to Australia with? I did it. I didn't make many friends, but you know, a couple of, a couple of does, deodorant How cans. does that even work? <laughs> sure. Well, each, each night what I'd do is a couple of hours before bed, I'd find a river or, or something to, just to wash all the salt off. Um, it was a little bit difficult in Australia because of crocodiles, but you know, you make a plan. <laughs> Clap, clap loudly, they, they go away. And uh, wash all the salt off. That's your main enemy, really, is just getting the salt off your body. And then you dry out in the next few hours. You uh, dry them on the bike? You just dry them on the bike. Uh, your socks, I again would wash them. Uh, and if they weren't dry by the time I, I, I got into my tent, I would actually take them off and put them under my shorts, wrap them around my thigh, and my body heat would actually dry them by the morning. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So, but then again, I was racing. I didn't make many friends. You don't have to go to those sort of extremes. 
So you've got your casual clothing you, yeah. if it gets cold. Uh, the other benefit with this I also take is a spare stuff sack. Um, uh, in here you can put food, any of your extras. This also acts as a handy pillow for all your kit. So you put all your kit in there. Nice. And now, it speeds up. One pair of shorts, one pair of shorts, pillow. but you've got a pillow. Priorities, mate. Priorities, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. You know, although if you've had a couple of pints, you'll sleep anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always take a little, a little face towel. Um, really useful little tip is in the morning, often on the inside of your bivy bag, it's a bit wet, or on the inside of your tent, it's a bit wet. You can use this to dry it out. It saves a bit of weight yeah. when you're cycling. Um, and then also, you can use it to wipe your face in the morning. Cool. More Perfect. luxury. Okay. More luxury. You know, you, got, you, you want to have fun. You don't, you don't want to hate it. A um, couple of spare inner tubes. You know, there's nothing worse than pushing. Uh, sleeping bag. Uh, I'm fortunate enough, being a gram nerd, to have one of the world's lightest sleeping bags. So that's about 300 grams. Um, that one there. Uh, so with the tent, and then actually I have, I actually I brought my heavy camping mat this time. Um, I have one that's half half that weight, and I can get my entire camping set up to 900 grams. Um, but that saying, you don't need all the fancy kit. You know, all you need is a camping mat, you know, you can use bubble wrap. People use bubble wrap before, or you get one of the, the sort of roll mats, you cut it down to your body size. You just want to keep your core kind of warm. Yeah. That's about it. You really don't need all the fancy stuff. Um, as a lightweight sleeping bag, if you've got your gilet, actually you can get a really light sleeping bag and wear the gilet in, 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 your, in your tent. Uh, you are sacrificing pillow space, but you know, yeah. priority. Well, yeah. <laughs> so we've got sleeping sorted. What about food? That's a big deal for me. Food's an interesting one because if you're only going for a weekend, I think there's no point in taking cooking equipment. Cooking equipment's heavy, it's cumbersome, and actually it, then you, you feel quite isolated. If you just there's two of you, you're in a field boiling up some pasta, yeah, that's great sometimes, but I, I want to go bike packing to meet people and I want to spend those few hours in the pub and or you can quite easily survive on cold supermarket food as well. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest taking cooking equipment if you're just going for a for a long weekend. Right. Um, but you know, it's quite nice to have a brew in the morning though. So Yeah, there is know, that. Maybe maybe a little stove for, for your brew. Okay, well and that'll fit presumably in this kit. And that you will did. fit in this setup. You'd probably right. I'd probably have to put my tent in, in the front bar bag and that sort of thing. A few other things I haven't put here, lights, very important to have lights. Often in bikepacking, you'll be going well into the evening. Um, really important to have good, strong lights. Um, and, and lastly, you know, a little celebratory ah, tipple. More luxury. End, more luxuries. Um, drink responsibly, kids, only after you've been cycling. There we go. And lastly, always, got to have a mascot. Little flying cow. There we go. Shameless plug. He's on Instagram. <laughs> uh, at Adventure Mascot. Because uh, you've got to talk to someone, especially if you're going packing on your own. Um, you know, we've, we've solved many, many world problems have together. Really? We we forgot them straight away when we hit the next hill. But. So if there is no pub, you have a hip flask <laughs> and a cow and to a talk cow to. to. Right, there we go. And, and that, that's it? That is pretty much it. You know, there's, there's stuff you can get rid of here. You don't need the towel. You don't really need the pillow. Um, you don't really? No, no, you definitely you need, need that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't need a fancy, fancy camping mat. You can get away, as I say, bubble wrap even does the job. That has blown my mind, Sean. I'm not going to lie. The idea of getting up tomorrow morning, putting this on my bike, any old bike, and potentially riding to Australia is, is, is unbelievable. It really fuels my imagination. I have this in my shed ready to go. Someone can phone me and say, right, where do you want to go tomorrow? And I can pick anywhere on the map and pretty much just get on my bike and go. You yeah, might have sort out a few visas and things, you know small problems but uh it's it's such a nice it's just a nice way to to travel i think rather yeah. than than any other way i suppose you just need a credit card tucked in there <laughs> boom well that is the other option you can get rid of all this <laughs> yeah <laughs> well thanks for having me si hey, i, I really pleasure. hope this sheds some light on how easy bike packing actually is you know i'm a big fan of gcn i've subscribed if you want to subscribe to the channel Click on my beard somewhere around here. <laughs> nice, there you go. Right, now, if you want to go riding around the world, you're going to need to be well up on your roadside maintenance bodges, I would have thought. I bet you've got a fair few up your sleeve. But if you want to see a video on that, click just down there. And then to contrast with what you need for bikepacking to go around the world, what about what you need to go racing around Spain? Ian Boswell from Team Sky took us through what's in his suitcase.